Hello and welcome to the Kerfuffle Podcast with me, David Mentz, and him... Simon Whale, not infected. <laughs> Definitely not infected. This not is... with that. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, uh, our oh. viewers at home can see we are properly... Uh, taking all precautions. Yeah. We got merch. We got uh, we got face masks, a full face masks. Yeah, as quickly as I can write them up. Very <laughs> impressive. I've got to tell you, the inside of my face mask smells a little bit like a state agent. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, also, I'm getting that. We've taken a different view. So you've gone with the blue side on the outside. Yeah, and I've gone on the inner, isn't it? So one of us is going to live. I'm vote, <laughs> vote now. <laughs> who, who would you like to live? I think I know where that vote is going. Well, it's very ah. There we go. That's oh, better. That's enough. better. And, and, and you haven't introduced. Oh, I'm to... sorry. I've almost patient this, zero. This is patient zero. <laughs> I'm gonna my mask off for that. This is this is <laughs> Milton Janish, right? Yeah, right? I pronounced that correctly. You got it right, bang Okay, on. and he much. is here to tell us about his. Did you call him baby? I said bang on. Oh, bang on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, baby. Bang on, baby. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, yeah, it's an Australian M- thing. Milton. <laughs> no, 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 it's, hence why this disease. St- no, 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 I'm definitely not saying that. that okay. all Australians no, no, no it, it, we'll get into that in a second. Okay. Uh, Milton joins us from Keyware uh, and is going to demo some fantastic prop tech. Lo- is it live as well? This it's is the live. First, live. And, 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 and I actually. Fit somewhere, yes. If you can fit it. I, I actually think this is amazing. You should be forced to sit through a, a prop tech demo. What, so that I don't just talk about it? I Having have to tortured people it's... for years with your demos, <laughs> but, we're going <laughs> yeah. to yeah. flip it. Um, but obviously, the coronavirus is very much in the news. Yeah, what's um, that? And uh, <laughs> people are... They're, is that they're, why they're washing their hands? That's why everybody's washing their hands, Simon. You must wash your hands as well, before and after, yeah? <laughs> well, in fact, you, you must do it during as well. <laughs> All right? <laughs> Um, but they are scrambling to find the uh, the origins of this disease in this country. So that's yeah. patient zero, whoever he is. Yeah. Uh, Self-isolation so happening all over the place. All right? over the place. Um, so if you know who like, patient zero, agent zero is, yeah. please write in to podcast okay. at we're kerfuffle.it. We're going to pick them out, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, we're going to name and shame. Um, Normally but, a monkey or a bat. This is actually very prevalent and uh, very pertinent to the prop tech industry because we've got a lot of people that work uh, on the road, visiting people, spreading viruses mm-hmm. around the country. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Um, this is really how we're viewed by you agencies. This is exactly how we see you as living virus spreaders. <laughs> Petri dishes. Um, but... This is very serious because millions of workers could be told to work from home as ministers draw up a battle plan to prevent the coronavirus epidemic in Britain. Uh, Companies may also be ordered to halt all unnecessary travel and social distancing strategy might be implemented as well by the government. You started your social distancing strategy (laughs) years ago as soon as you got a Facebook account. (laughs) Yeah, what being just sent to a special place. But it it has very, very, very serious implications for men with facial hair. The, this is the great. I, I know already know where you're going with this. This is the this is the American uh, advice, um, isn't it? Th- well, this is it. No, this is now NHS guidelines oh, it's for NHS, people with facial but they've hair. But ta- they've taken it now from America. Wow. That's they? it. Yeah. Um, so acceptable is obviously clean, clean shaven. Um, stubble is a no no. Because you, you can't... Looks look, like my, that, that whole thing, by the way, is my best night at Mardi Gras. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen you with a woman that looks like a combination of all these guys. Um, the Zorro's okay, so you're allowed a, a, a nice little yeah, moustache. Stay, as as just to explain, this is so it all stays within the within the mask, Within the mask. Right. This is all about yeah. getting a nice but, tight seal but these masks, on your mask. I thought that no one's got any of these masks, so what are we doing this for? So, well, ap- apparently somebody's going to survive, the person that reads this article okay. and, and sticks to it. What does that mean it? for the hipsters? I mean, Yeah, well, they, well they, there's no way they'll get rid of that, will no. they? You, you're allowed, that's a big one, you're allowed a, uh, a Frank Zappa. I love the idea. Um, you cannot have a circle beard, which is like a bit, a bit of a goatee. Forget okay. it. That's gone. Not because it will spread the disease, because it belongs in the 1990s. Yeah. And, and you should just <laughs> stay there. Um, and hipsters are gone. Full beards oh, are gone, I'm afraid, mate. Yeah. Right. Um, so that's moved on. But um, one of the things that this now means is that we've obviously got a shortage of um, the antibacterial hand wash stuff. Yeah, so yeah, um, that stuff that you see people so with normally, OCD. Yeah, so you need to, I, I think the guidelines state that you need more than 60% alcohol. 
That's, that's half the stuff we drink, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say. So if you can't find any of that stuff, you can just use Ye- Jägermeister yeah. will do very yeah. nicely. Take Mad Dog top. WKD 2020. <laughs> just soak your hands in it. <laughs> just going to spend a show just talking about our favourite drinks. <laughs> <laughs> but it has, obviously, it's had knock-on effects in uh, other industries as well. Um, Diet Coke supplies are going to dry up. Because you interrupt the whole flow and cycle of the supply chain. Mm. So once China stops mm. accepting deliveries, that kind of has a knock-on It's on almost effect. like this just-in-time uh, supply chain stuff is rearing its head again, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. So this is... Now that Brexit's done, I didn't think I'd see it again. But Well, well here you wow, go. Well, amazing, apparently, we can't, we can't get our Also, did stuff... you see that story the other day just talking about your... Obviously, you've been trying to tease me about the Boris bounce. Obviously, now mm. fantastically well. But it's not, is it? Because cider sales are down over the last year. 20 million they've lost. And it's on. And we're heading, heading south as well. So Cider or sorry. cyber? No, cider. <laughs> cider as in the drinking stuff. I can stuff. give a dozen about cider. <laughs> cider. <laughs> no, no, cider. Stuff you drink on park benches. But isn't that just the popularity thing? Uh, I, I, it was it was okay. No, no, I think it's optimism, isn't it? Isn't it about where we're going? Or would you drink more of it if you thought the economy was going to crap? I don't know. I think so. I think cider I'm is... I'm going to do some research on the way back through, <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, through town. If you see Simon Whale uh, sat at a bus stop drinking a bottle of White Lightning cider, please don't engage, stop. don't stare. <laughs> Give him a lift. Give him a pat on the back. But can I just say? I, I mean, I don't want to get all all blasé about it. And it's yeah, tremendously. But isn't it just a little bit overreaction all of this stuff? I mean, it's like you know when you look at the comparative amount of people dying from all the other million and one different things, and they're talking about it's already now having as big an impact, and they're talking about it potentially being as big an impact as two thousand seven and eight for. The, well, I think over the weekend you saw the markets had already tanked, and yeah. now I think this morning they started to bounce back again. Overselling. Um, mm. I think there is that propensity to sort of over panic a little bit yep. um but it is serious and i think that you know we're, we're seeing stories like this where uh, this is like winning the lottery and getting the bonus ball at the same time mm-hmm. there's a woman that's managed to catch the virus twice <laughs> <laughs> okay now Theresa May. it's definitely Theresa May. <laughs> now this apparently does happen with flu you can catch the flu virus twice because a novel strain in your body uh, that, that it hasn't encountered. I love the fact they call it a novel strain. You know, like sort of. Oh, how novel! I've, I've caught it twice. Oh, Simon, you, you do look sweaty and feverish. What's that? The second time you've had a bone. Very novel. How novel? Very novel. But um, uh, basically, this, this is what the, the virus will mutate, and as that happens, it's harder to sort of um, kill it. Yeah. They still haven't got that vaccine, or if they have, um, only They're the, it only the upper echelons have it. Yeah. They haven't released the it yet to the, to the general. Uh, they released, released but it. but they are talking about <laughs> it being a massive, massive threat. Yep. to uh, all those industry types that we're thinking of going to Mipham this year. Yes, well, you did joke about it, didn't and, you, in the uh, last yeah, one. I did. And, 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 and actually, this... The big I am names. glad, though, because Kevin Ellis was planning to have a boat, and he was taunting me about it because he knows I get sick on anything. I was thinking about boats. Yeah. Yeah. My stag do, <laughs> my friends decided that it would be a really good idea to kidnap me. So, th- so they did. They put a bag over my head, bundled no me, one knew. bundled me into, <laughs> <laughs> bundled me into a boot of the car. And as they were doing that, uh, the door came down on my head, knocked me out clean. I woke up three hours later on a boat. Yeah. Shit is Jason Bourne story, <laughs> <laughs> with no memory of this, who he was. This is my. This I have to sell property for a living. This is my. <laughs> <laughs> this is my agent's. This is this is my origin story, um, but um, I woke up to find out that I I get seasick just looking at. Oh, a it's boat. awful! I can't stand it. Yeah, yeah. I can't that's, do it. That's terrifying me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the big names in property skip industry events, so the first people to pull out of Mipham uh, were Collins, people like Savills, Knight Frank, Cushman, mm-hmm. Wakefield. Um, but now they've actually postponed it for two yeah. months, which last time I asked you about Mepham, you said you couldn't go. Now it always go. clashes so with football. So we can do a kerfuffle trip. June, we're doing a kerfuffle we trip. We get a disease oh. discount. Yes! Hey, <laughs> go on, um, get in. And I don't think you have to go on a boat, do you? Uh, I think that's where all the best parties are. But why don't you sort of enjoy wearing that captain's I've already got hat a- at a jaunty <laughs> angle? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, yeah. sailor. Don't start doing all that stuff, you know, what does a handkerchief coming out, that San Francisco stuff. You are, you are going to love that. You're going to love that. But I'm afraid um, when you do get travelling, 
Um, China is now going to be banning the eating of cats and dogs. Okay. And I know that's one of your favourites. Well, I, I just genuinely don't understand why people get so upset by it. I mean, if they've been tortured and, you know, they, they do the, the inhumane thing, I don't particularly like the way that they keep them in cages. Mm. But just eating cats and dogs, I have absolutely no... I'd eat a panda. I think it's... <laughs> <laughs> You'd eat a panda. I'd eat a panda. In one sitting. A whole panda. <laughs> yeah, and then the challenge. Do you get one of those certificates? Like yeah. the artist curry. I completed yeah, the yeah. panda challenge. I wouldn't, I wouldn't club it to death. I just want to make it absolutely clear to <laughs> any of our viewers, no pandas were harmed in the making yeah. of this episode. But if you do have episode, spare pandas, you've got to die in anyway. <laughs> Um, no, but I think it's the way that these these rare animals, not yeah. cats and dogs, because yeah. they're prevalent, but... Yes, um, they, they keep going through, they keep... Tiger penises and all sorts, all of sorts stuff. of stuff, all together in the same sort yeah. of enclosure. They call, them, not... they call them wet, wet zones, or so. oh, am I getting confused again at the weekend? I think that's a okay. video you watched over the weekend. <laughs> to be honest with you, yeah. no, it's horrible. Um, it's really check nice. out wet zones on Pornhub. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, they're lo- they're looking to try and ban that, and if they ban that, hopefully it will stop the spread of these these viruses because that's where they reckon it's come from in the first place. Yeah, um, and of of course, your favourite politician in the world, and you've got him on your T-shirt today, um, Donald Trump yeah. has controversially put, just said put, it's, it's not an issue, is put it? Mike <laughs> Pence in charge. Mike um, Pence? Just, <laughs> just, just, to, just to put this in context, this is the man that has denied <laughs> HIV yeah. and that smoking kills yeah. you. Yeah. Okay? And, he, and he just sits Very nodding scientific. behind Trump on everything. Going, yes, <laughs> boss. Yes, but, boss. But he is now in charge of America's... So uh, action plan for the spread. But they, of they said it was a Democrat. They said it was a Democrat uh, trick, wasn't it? Yeah, to stop him getting it was. Re-elected. Yeah, so <laughs> he's a genius. That <laughs> It'll work. Uh, unbelievable. Yeah, it worked. Unbelievable. Um, and, and so yeah, so that's all the uh, that's all the coronavirus news I've got Good, for well, that's you. That's cheerful, isn't it? Oh. That, we'll see you next week if we're here. Hopefully, <laughs> one in three yeah, of us yeah, may yeah. survive. Um, okay. In other news, uh, your beloved football team. Yes, it's gone off the side of a cliff, hasn't it? So this is dark. Yeah, never mind coronavirus. But it's not about how badly you oh. do. It's about spin. And oh. this is clever because Klopp has gone on record as saying on. that now that the record, the unbeaten record yeah. has gone, we can be, we can they play can more. play freely again, exactly. which I thought was genius. Well, Why haven't people used that in, in, in the agency world already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that we've... Not Nothing managed to no sell any to houses. <laughs> <laughs> we can finally be good. <laughs> this will free us up to do some some yeah, good it's stuff. Best, best to steer away from that. As I said, I'm a bit, still a bit delicate about that. Okay, you had some news that you wanted to bring up. I did think. I? Yeah, you did. What you definitely did. Defo did. That was you a defo couple. Did. Whilst you look at that, I'm going to give you one of my favourite bits of news. Uh, woman 81 trains parrot to torment her neighbours. <laughs> okay. Uh, in the hands of experts, opera is the most sublime of art forms, but in the hands of an angry pensioner with an axe to grind, a parrot to sing along, it can c- become a weapon in the long-running dispute between neighbours. Um, so basically, this old woman has um, trained her parrot to sing at her neighbours, um, and they've described it as being akin to Chinese torture. Um, however, that's Chinese, not... Chinese aren't having a good time at the moment. <laughs> no, not, not at all. Everything but Chinese. they will eat uh, parrots. Very, oh. Yeah, okay, fine. But um, this this old lady, what I thought was great about the story was not the fact that she's trained the parrot. She didn't give a it time. was all the other stuff that she's done. Oh. So um, she's been caught on CCTV 38 times as she smeared grease over the bonnets of the car and van belonging to the couple. In addition, she scratched the bonnet of their Toyota with her ring, placed shot <laughs> down... But it gets wow. better. It gets, Mine's like that sometimes. It gets better. It gets better. She placed sharp tacks under the wheels of Mr. Appleton's van and threw dog shit <laughs> in the couple's garden. Now, I've been angry before. <laughs> yeah. I've been described as livid, yeah. but I've never actually collected yeah. dog mess and then thrown it. Tells more, more, was it? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think that's great. So, um, how are you getting on with your neighbour now, Simon? Oh, good. No, no, everything's, yeah. everything's lovely. All I good. Would never, I would never, you know. You'd never wind anything, them up to that. Do extent. anything unsociable on purpose. Fair no, enough. sorry, I just found that story, the one you were talking about there. And again, it's just to take it back to the Corona one. It was the churches. Uh, communion wine has been ditched because they've stopped giving out communion wine because of uh, concerns of it catching, which 
Does it show you've got too much faith in your deity, though? So I, I've got to confess to never having had communion wine. I used to do it at school because I genuinely used to do it and then shake my head to pretend I was getting drunk. Does it taste like pork? It's horrible. No, it's disgusting. It's like it the cheapest wine certainly you can get. Doesn't yeah. ta- it doesn't taste like the son of... No. God. <laughs> I don't know what that's meant to. Uh, probably Sublime, <laughs> I would imagine. Yes, tasty. Mm. Mm. Uh, lovely. Hello. Hi, is that Andrew? Hi, how are you? All right. You've been chosen at random. To- no. <laughs> <laughs> Hello there. Very it's the kerfuffle, uh, kerfuffle podcast here with Simon, David, and we've even got Milton here from Inspect Real Estate. Hello, so hello. We always like to throw in an Aussie for extra value. Uh, how are good. you? You're right, Andrew. Yeah, I'm really good. Andrew, you are a uh, as as it says on your uh, on your LinkedIn profile, which I always go on as verbatim. You are a real estate analyst uh, uh, into PR journalism as well in this space. And mm-hmm. but just on that subject, you broke a bit of a massive story this weekend, I believe, um, in the Telegraph. Yeah, we uh, we've been. <laughs> Online agents are, uh, well, a bit of an enigma, really. Uh, but the big story that came was that uh, we finally had the figures that told us how many properties came off the market with purple bricks. There's been massive debate about how many they sell, how many they take to the market. But the big bit of information we got was that over 21,000 properties came off the market in 2019. 21,000, 21, yeah. that's Over 21,000. Well, why that's significant is obviously purple bricks is £999 or £13.99 as a base price to list. So what we know is that those 21,000 people paid £1,000 or more mm. and then took their houses off the market, and that was £18 million of fee. And that's that's pretty much beyond conjecture, isn't it? Really, as you said, we know. Uh, no, it was confirmed. It was confirmed by Purple Bricks. Okay, right. Okay. So, 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 so they they, they they say yes, but the bigger thing is obviously Purple Bricks have been going almost for five years. Yeah, and this was only the UK, and we know, of course, that uh, in the US and uh, Australia yeah. they ceased trading last year. So we've got to guess, Simon, that. Um, a lot of vendors out there didn't get their houses sold either. And those properties came off the market because there's no agent to market them. Yeah. And it leads to this kind of residual thing, doesn't it, with traditional agents where the, the, the traditional agent is then challenged to um, match match the discount that they've paid to Purple Bricks or the other online agents to get the other agent to go with them. But to be honest, it's got nothing to do with them, has it? They chose to go with Purple Bricks in the first place. Well, I mean, there are arguments that basically you pay your money, you take your chance. But um, another interesting fact is that we know that in the UK last year, um, they listed 60,000 properties. Mm. So Purple Bricks, massive list, they listed 60,000. And we also know that they took off 21,000. Mm. And then we've got um, Vic Darby saying, we complete... On 81% of our sales. Now, you know, I'm a man. Do the maths. Do do the maths. You you take on 60,000, 20,000 come off in the same year. Now, obviously, there's a skew of figures, Mm. but I've got to say, for you to complete on 81% of your stock, Mm. I think that's difficult. I mean, I was an agent for, I don't know, uh, God, 30 years. 32 years on a state agent. I think the ratios are you take 10 on, you sell seven subject to contract and five go through. To take 10 on and complete on eight would, I think, be quite difficult because I think people just take sometimes take the house off the market because they're not moving. Mm. So uh, It's almost done yeah. about 120%, isn't it, sort of statistics? Yeah, I mean, people say I hate purple bricks. I don't. I just think it's bad tech because I do, I do an awful lot of work in the prop tech area, which is, you know, digitizing uh, processes and making life easier for estate agents. Yeah. It isn't duff, duffing them up, and it certainly is not saying, oh, you're going to lose your jobs. But the trouble with estate agents, I'm mid-50s, is if I still had the day job and I still run an agency and someone comes to me and says, oh, I've got a bit of tech here and it's going to make your life wonderful, I'd go, oh, get lost. 
uh, you're trying to sell me something that I don't need, and I'm too busy selling houses. Uh, but the problem is the world's moved on. You know, fintech has told us that uh, technology is all around us all the time. It's an ever-changing world. And I often say to clients, I do consultancy, um, take a week off and go and buy some items. Yeah. And they go, what, what the hell are you talking about? And I said, well, you know, you don't buy items like you used to in the 1980s, the 1990s. Go out there. And then, then often, I mean, they don't actually take a week off, but they say, now I get it. My customer base is on their mobile phones three hours a day, looks at it 70 times a day. Mm. If I'm not communicating with my uh, buyers via, you know, a mobile, then um, how are they even going to know about me? Yeah. So I think Purple Bricks is good in the sense that it said, hey, the old model is old. We need a new one. And obviously, countrywide, which I've got to say, <laughs> I was a little bit involved in that, calling them a dinosaur this week. Mm. Um I love Countrywide. I used to work for them in the 1980s, but they've lost their way, so they've got no tech. And mm. I would say Purple Bricks may be bad tech. So, so, tech. so Purple Bricks today took a bit of a battering, didn't they? They lost almost 5%, so that's taken them below their listing price for the first time. Yeah, um, they listed on the alternative uh, investment market on the uh, 19th of December 2015 at 95.5p. Yeah. Um, and they were bobbling around at a pound and seven, and now I think they've gone under that. Yeah. Um, so, so that's so that's that's pretty interesting. Do you have any? Uh, do you think there are going to be any follow up stories, or have they cleared the worst of it out there for the moment? Um, well, the big story was this. I actually, um, in another publication, uh, said uh, that um, in April 2018, they had. 152 million pounds in the bank. Yeah. So this wasn't revenue that they've got from their, you know, business model. It was Axel Springer had bought some shares. Yeah. Uh, they had some investment when they went on the alternative uh, market. So they had a cash flow of 152 mil. So a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, in December time, they had 41 million of it left, and I think That's now they've got about time. 30. Yeah, 32. So I think. <laughs> Even though they're getting all this money, all this cash flowing through them, it's more expensive to be an online agent than a traditional agent. And, who would have and that's the that? truth. Yeah, who would have yeah and who, who would have thought that? Because basically they don't have any salespeople. You know, yeah. they have listers, yeah. but they don't have a big sales force. They don't have offices, and yet they're more expensive than traditional agents. It's, it's crazy. That's it's an amazing little scoop there, Andrew. Will you do us a favour yeah. and stay in touch with us over the weeks and months to come and uh, let us know any more of these? Yeah, absolutely. Anything that's coming along. I mean, you know, I, I think agency will change. And I think, you know, uh, there's some great, I mean, there's some great stuff. Out there. I, I'll tell you what is wrong with the industry at the moment. Here we go. Uh, I was at the National Association of Estate Agents yeah. a few days ago. I believe I actually bumped into yourself. You uh, got, got a lovely uh, kerfuffle uh, cap that the dog now wears. That is She's what's wrong with the agent <laughs> with, the, with the world. Just to be clear, that's for the head. <laughs> that's for the head. And um, a lovely gentleman came up to me, and actually he turned out to be my local agent. And he's a really good guy, and he's very involved with uh, Roper, and he's very involved with pushing agency forward. And he said, you know, we've got some new paperwork coming out, Andrew. It's really great. It's going to get things moving really quickly. We're going to get um, things exchanged more quickly. And I said, have you heard of your keys? And he says, oh, yeah, we're going to go and see them in about a month. And I said, well, I've been in to see uh, uh, Craig Massey. It's Craig Massey and uh, Ricardo Nucci Dawson. And I said, do you realize they're getting things exchanged in seven days, 168 hours, and that isn't seven working days. Yeah. So with all, all due respect, the bits of paper you were talking to me about that, you know, maybe coming into being in two years' time and you've done all these pilot schemes, it's going to be irrelevant because technology is just going to change the whole industry and it's going to make everyone think, oh, my God, I can get my house exchanged. You've made probably five working days. Yeah. So therefore, the process before, the sales process before, why don't we do that in five days rather than 18 weeks, mm. which is horrendous yeah, amount of time. Yeah. Well, then we keep talking yeah. about it, don't we? This is the huge disruptive wave that people keep yeah. uh, waiting to happen and and seemingly uh, hasn't hit yet, but um, it, it, we keep dodging, don't we? Well, if I was sitting in a business now and I was making 500 mil 
uh, sorry, so if I was sitting in a business and I was making five, eight hundred thousand pound profit a year and I was driving around me Bentley and some person came along and said, prop tech's going to change your life, change your, well, I go, yeah, okay, yeah. whatever. <laughs> but but if you're 22, 25, these new guys and girls who are setting up their own agencies, they've grown up with tech. They don't need to be told it's great. And they're the ones who are going to have all the big rewards. I'll so tell, in a way... I'll tell you what's an interesting angle yeah. there. You know what? We were talking about that stat that I'd found out that on average across agents, they have 21 uh, suppliers, estate agency suppliers. Where, where, oh, do they? Where, yeah, yeah right. just in average. And, you know, those, those are just estate yeah. agency specifics. So are not including car fleets, electricity, all your oh, standard okay, office yeah. ones. But yeah. what was really interesting was actually those smaller ones you've just identified there, they're much more likely to have 30, 40, 50 because they're using apps left, right, and center. They've got Absolutely. Zapier plugging things in. It's almost yeah. like they're almost like cyborg agents that they're able to just, just absorb this technology in a much easier fashion than those people, quite rightly, if they've got 10, 15, 20 offices, have to take a much more measured approach about, don't they? Yeah, they do. And I can understand. And I think, I think tech-enabled agents are the future. Yeah, and being an agent myself, I think good agents, you know, good customer service, it's always going to be there. Mm. But, um, yeah, I think they've got to embrace the technology. And I think if you don't, it's not a problem, but you're just not going to make very much money. And then the agents who set up who are going to be tech-enabled are just going to eat your lunch. Brilliant. Thank you very uh, yeah. much for that time. Right. Really good of you to, 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 yeah. to fill our, our listeners in on that, and we'll stay in touch <laughs> okay. with you down the event. Magic. Thanks very All much, right, Andy. Cheers. Take care. All right, bye. Bye. All right, mate. How are you? Hello there, Mr. Ian White. Welcome to the Kerfuffle Podcast. Thank you. And this is uh, Simon Whale, who you know too well for my dulcet, lovely tones. We've got David Mintz sat opposite me and Milton Hello. from Inspect Real Estate, Hello. one of our guests here as well on the, on the side. How are you, Ian, first and foremost? Well, first of all, evening, gentlemen. And yes, very good, thank you. And yourself? Excellent, excellent. And we should, of course, to give you your full title, industry mover and shaker, guru, spider's web of all things um, that go on in the industry. I do. I hate the word guru. No, no. I don't think I said it, did I? Yes, you did. I, I don't actually know what my mouth says, so that's one of the biggest problems I've always had. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes, just one of them. Stop there. Stop there. Don't be, don't be mean. Um, Ian, well, there's many reasons we could get you onto this show, but I think one of the most interesting ones at the moment, in the light of your background, obviously, having been so prominent at Romans and then moving over to Countrywide, is the news that keeps, uh, keeps rolling on at the moment in terms of this countrywide lsl story just wanted to get yeah. a, get, a, get a feeling from you what you how how likely you think it is to happen and and, and do, if you think if you think it is going to be happen if it's actually a good thing for the parties involved um the likelihood of it happening i'm really on the fence to be honest with you because it's a very very complicated deal um it's not a merger, it's a takeover, let's be honest. It's it's being put out as a merger to yeah. keep the countrywide senior people happy, but that, that's not what it is. And it's from the LSL side, just to be clear on that. Sorry, say that again? It's from the LSL side where the, the takeover's coming from, yeah? Um, I'm not sure who's pushed the agenda, because it's also very, very clear, I think, to most people now that countrywide need to do something fairly dramatic in order to rescue the position. I, d I don't think just normal tactics, they can't fight their way out of where they found themselves. They couldn't sell um, themselves out, could they, with the... Um, they were trying yeah, to sell they, out the... What was it? The, was it the commercial arm? The Lambert Smith Hampton, where it would appear that somebody didn't do the due diligence on the buyer, and uh, as, as per the recent article, they found the only dame with no bacon. Um, you know, that's left them both embarrassed, but, but ultimately it's left them with a big hole in their, their budgets. Um you know, and apart from selling off possibly some of their premium brands, the ones that, that, that have some, some real value and some real appeal. And just to be clear, those would be like the Hamptons of the world, wouldn't they? Hamptons, John D. Wood, you know, they're, they're, mm. they're excellent brands. They've got things like Gascoigne Peas that certainly have a, a footprint in a very, very good part of the UK where you should be able to make an estate agency work very, very well um, and make, you know, make, make good headway profit-wise, you know, great house value, lots yeah. of turnover, et cetera, et cetera. So... Um, I think it's become very clear that Countrywide have to do something dramatic, whether that be a, a complete and utter change of their uh, customer service offering, which would be brave, selling off large parts of the business, which would be obvious, 
or in this case, uh, what's being dressed up as a merger to find some significant savings across the management and other you know, uh, elements of the business because clearly there would be offices that would be duplicated, there would be staff functions that would be duplicated and a lot of that would have to be or would presumably be stripped out to make is both that, businesses more efficient. Is that um, a horrible word, rationalisation? Yes, there's, there's no way that either party would be getting involved in it to keep the existing cost base where it is. So let, mm. let's all be pretty obvious that, that that is not the case. There is nothing in this for LSI if they're going to take on the entire cost base of Countrywide. Yeah. Um, that makes no sense. Countrywide don't have anything in their infrastructure. Excuse me, I've got hiccups. Uh, countrywide don't have anything in their infrastructure that would supersede what LSL have done or are doing. Yeah. You know, they seem to be slightly ahead of the curve. Um, in in uh, the, the the structure and the, and the strategies of their business, um, so I can't. I mean, will it happen? Is there any Don't, is there any any risk from the CMA at all? Is, is there any any anyone saying that you know you can't they won't be able to do this because of the, literally the size of the company, or is that not a factor? Do you think? I don't think it's a factor. I mean, you wouldn't be the first person that's asked it, but I mean, on the grounds they only represent about ten percent of the market between them, I can't see that that's relevant. Okay. Um, Stupid, you know, in their peak, stupid question, in their, really. In their peak countrywide, um, would have held. I mean, there may be some individual towns where the CMA may yeah. have interest if they genuinely occupying all of the brands. But I, 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 as, as an entity, to stop it happening through the CMA, no, I don't. I don't. I don't see that as a. I don't see. I don't. I don't see that as being an issue. I, I just struggled. I, I'm at the bit I struggle with is why it's of interest to LSL. Yet they appear to be the ones pushing the agenda. Um, I can't see why they do it. They're, they're, they're moving along reasonably nicely. They, they've got a much more agile, quicker thinking, um, or appear to have a quicker thinking, quicker manoeuvring board. They don't, they don't yeah. have, they're not saddled with huge debts. They're not making, uh, they haven't got a big tail of offices that are, I mean, they have got loss making offices, but, but they haven't got a huge tail that's causing problems. It's got a huge rent roll though, hasn't it? Countrywide to be fair still, is it, is it, is it 120,000 properties? I don't, I mean, it, that's still got to have some value in it down the line, hasn't it? Well, I, I think the, the only thing I can think of is obviously one, the 120,000, um, although I'm not sure those numbers are correct, but yes, there is a huge rent roll. Um, and I can see that as an advantage. Um, and I can see that their mortgage business, may have some interest. Yep. Um, I, I can see it. But as an estate agent, a chain and a network of estate agency businesses that is outdated, outmoded, not particularly well staffed in the main, doesn't have the champions of our industry running many, if any, of its offices and has terrible infrastructure problems that need sorting, both in terms of technology, management, leadership and everything else. Um, that's definitely what they're not what they're buying it for. So I think the rent roll is is one of the answers. I think possibly the mortgage business is another, um, and there could be some rationalisation that make both make both businesses more economically in the future to run by by sharing or, or, or removing an awful lot of cost. But should I, I should avoid doubling down and in, uh, investing in those shares just for the moment? It sounds like just the type of share you would buy. To <laughs> I've, already, I've already bought the share. Um, it, de- it depends how depends how brave you are, Simon. But uh, um, it's brave or stupid. A lot, pe- a lot of people, a lot of people <laughs> talked about not investing in Countrywide when the shares were seven or eight p. Well, yeah. they've done pretty well, haven't they? Despite the performance of the business, they've actually done okay. Yeah. So um, you know, share prices have always been very different to ground floor performance, um, and if a takeover stroke merger took real hold, um, they obviously have to acquire those shares. And I suspect you would see the shares go up by inertia alone. Mm. Um, so you could argue, you know, I'm not qualified. And I'm, please, anybody listening, don't go buying shares on my say so. But um, <laughs> A guarantee, kerfuffle listeners. Again, Ian White, a share <laughs> expert, has said, this is the one you want to double down, mortgage your house, do whatever you need to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, imagine, imagine, imagining, imagine having been in for a million quid and double downing when they were seven p and putting yeah. in two million. Just imagine where you'd be now. Yeah. So, um, you... countrywide, c- countrywide hasn't hasn't been a real problem for it. Well, it's been a problem for some investors, but not those that have been able to chase the market down and keep buying as they yeah. go went down, because they would have secured their position. It's gone up by so much now from seven p. What are they now? I, don't, I haven't looked this morning. Three pounds something probably. Um, 
Mm. Uh, but I can't remember where they are. Does anyone know where they are? Does anybody look? I did have. Today? I was having a look earlier. Let's just have a look. See where the. Uh, no, I don't want to look at that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and that's your web browsing history. You yeah, just come across. Just delete that. Uh, <laughs> LSL that up to just up sixty three. We're country wise. Uh, for some reason, I've got pets at home. That's not relevant. Um, I don't know where it is. Where are country wise. Simon, you don't own a pet. <laughs> yeah. What's going on, man? Uh, up there, just slightly up there. Nothing, nothing much. What, um, what, what are they sat at? Uh, 305. So anyone that bought them at 7p has done very well. Mm. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I think for the sake of the industry, a great name like Countrywide, I, 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 I would like to see it survive. Um, I would like to see it survive in a very different mantra than it currently is because I don't, I don't think it's doing an awful lot for the industry. I, don't, no. I, I think it could and I think it should be able to do a lot for the industry, but I don't think it's doing much for it at the moment because I think most of its shops are not particularly filled with highly skilled estate agents and therefore they're not doing any favours for the actual industry as a whole in yeah. terms of people's perception of how, how, how it's done or when it's done properly. Well, that if they engage with a poor estate agent, that's their perception of how estate agents is. But whereas in the past, there were, there were some very, you know, there was a lot of strong brands, weren't they? And you knew they'd be strong on, on fees and areas and so there wouldn't be a race to the bottom. So, you know, the, at least... The brands know. were strong, but the way that they were breeding their agents and, and training them was very much on that sort of corporate model. Yeah. And... You tend to find when it filtered down to the nags, they were extremely unskilled, and the turnover of staff there has always been was very tremendous. Nice, yeah, you yeah. wouldn't know who you were dealing with from one day to the next. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Ian, th again, thank you very much for that expert view on that. Uh, be interested. We'll catch in with you from time to time if that's okay as that story develops. Yeah, no worries, guys. Enjoy the rest of your podcast. Is it a podcast? Yeah, podcast. Oh, it is. Right? Yeah. Podcast, yeah. podcast. Yeah. We've got everything here, Ian. <laughs> okay, enjoy. Cheers, guys. Cheers, bye -bye. Thank Cheers. you very much. Bye. Cheerio. Bye -bye. Lovely. Um, any of you use WhatsApp for, for business? I know you hardly ever respond to <laughs> <Yeah>. WhatsApp. <laughs> for WhatsApp's one of the few people you can get me on. Yes, I am a big <laughs> WhatsApp user. So uh, estate agents have now been warned over WhatsApp rules uh, in a what they call a ticking time bomb. Thousands of estate agents who use the free version of WhatsApp on their smartphones to communicate with customers are exposing themselves, and not in the way that you think. Uh, to <laughs> well, that is what WhatsApp usually for. Well, that's usually what you use WhatsApp for. Uh, they're exposing themselves to prosecution by WhatsApp and could face regulators over GDPR and privacy laws, it has been claimed. The use of WhatsApp within the sales and lettings industry is now widespread, uh, but now agencies from uh, many agencies from small independents to large corporates often have no idea that their staff are breaching the condition yeah. of WhatsApp's T's and C's. Uh, most estate agents assume that the hugely popular free version of the, the app, um, which some 80% 80, 80 of people between 18 and 24 all use for their own personal smartphones, um, they're assuming that that is going to be compliant, and it's not. Um, so there is a paid-for version. But that, surely that doesn't contravene the, the GDPR bit just by itself. We're gonna to have to find something out. There's gotta be there's gotta be more stuff. But that's just a communication tool, isn't it? It's not <clears throat> Well, here's here's the pitch. Are you ready for it? <laughs> According to Paul Gandar, whose company Stitch enables agents to comply with WhatsApp's <laughs> new rules. Oh, oh uh, Millennium Bug story. Hey. Oh, buy, buy with By us. the way, if anyone calls you following this podcast, ten percent to for yeah, my referrals. friends. Um, as uh, as uh, and they can be GDPR and privacy law compliant. Um, he says thousands of agencies across the UK are unaware of the new requirements. Well, thanks well, to yeah. the Negotiator mm. magazine and well, some paid for advertising, that's they now are. Um, right. What else you got for us? I've got some gems. Um, I'm a little bit worried about you. Yeah. In a, is this a mental state, financial state? Um, latest on the future of referral fees, including the Oh, that idea. This brand. isn't good, is it? Announcement yeah. expected shortly. So, um, industry regulator, the National Trading Standards Estate and Letting mm. Agency team, the, um, it, it's got a really catchy acronym, NTSELAT. 
I think that's what it's called. <laughs> yeah. um, has, <laughs> off, which is brilliant. <laughs> uh, has been monitoring agents' compliance with their guidance on disclosure of referral fees over the last 12 months. And together with the property ombudsman, it has also recently asked agents to participate in a survey to assess agents' awareness and uptake of referral fee guidance rules. Um, now, they're going to have some real problems in, in implementing this, and we're expecting some major news on it. But um, they're basically saying that this is going to take the um, goodness out of the industry. Um, some comments on on that online. Uh, agents are, f- in fact, split into four camps, according to, a, to one bright spark. Um, those who refer customers on to third parties yep. and receive referral fees and don't care about the quality of the conveyancing service that the public will receive, as the payments they receive total a massive amount mm-hmm. uh, and is too tempting. Those who refer customers on to third parties and receive referral fees and do care about the quality mm-hmm. of the conveyancing service the public will receive. Those who refer customers on to the third parties and don't receive any fer- referral fees at all. And those who don't refer customers on yeah. to third parties. Um, but you said that's about me because actually isn't the real <laughs> highlight of this story is that this is, again, just agents being victimised because I, as a technology person, that's not going to apply to. No, and I think it is about agents being victimised. And I think that... Um, One which, more punch. You know, yeah. sat, there, sat there, a rope of dope. Well, what more can they hit as well? They've, they've, take, are, they've taken all the goodness out of it. Yeah. But my... So the issue <clears throat> is here, and you're going to talk to us in a minute about where you've been last week and this week, but um, the issue is, and I've always said this, is that we have no real voice for our agency, no. that if, for, for, for the thousands of agents up and down the country that is actually lobbying on our behalf. I think they're not lobbying. They've just been ignored. I'm not sure that's the case. I think if you cozy up to people in Parliament you because Parliament. you want mm. to become a regulator, yeah. so if you are the RICS or your ARLA or the NAEA, mm. hello to all of Simon's friends in all of those <laughs> but if you are from any of these these places and you're, you've got one eye on whether or not they're going to appoint you as a regulator, you're not going to put on that kind of pressure really that's needed. Yeah. Um, so if we've seen the industry come under fire and we've seen money being taken out of agents' pockets every day, and the job that we have to do made harder. Now, some of this regulation is great. So when they talk about bringing Roper mm. in and all these changes that they're going to make, mm. some of it's fantastic because we've gone unregulated for yeah. forever. Um, but the other point is we've got nobody that we can actually trust yeah. um, to stand up for us that we don't feel has a vested interest one way or the other. Mm. We need a hero. <laughs> we need a regulator. And I have been petitioning Simon Wales to be that hero because we need to see his face in in Westminster more often. (laughs) Okay, if 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 there's if there's a man (laughs) if there's a man that they will they will listen to at Parliament, it's you. As as Trump said in 2014, I'm not running, but thank you, David. Watch this space. (laughs) Uh, But seriously, if anybody has had thoughts about becoming. Um, I think we need pressure groups and yeah, we need lobbyists. And, and we need so people that are going to come stand- into play. That these things usually play out because you think about tenant fee bans and regulation. They did come into a, you know into fruition. So they yeah. they're bringing this in now. There's just the start of something that will not stop and it will come into play. Yeah. They made it clear that they see traditional agency as you know as, as behind the times and and mm. because of that stopping the consumer. So they put all this faith in things like the online agents, which as we've just been discussing earlier, just mm. is unwarranted. Isn't yeah, it? absolutely. Certainly, certainly where they are at the moment, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. But your your issue is that what they'll do is they'll ask a bunch of questions very vaguely, not to everybody, and because yeah. they're not reaching mm. every agent, because these these organisations don't speak to every Based agent. On a survey of seven people, there's only one organisation in the world that speaks to every agent, and that is the Kerfuffle Podcast, yeah. my friend. Every week to <laughs> every yeah, agent, yeah, yeah. we don't care whether you've paid us or not. <laughs> but if you do want to send those checks in, <laughs> yeah, yeah. really welcome. Um, right move released some fantastic that results was, again. So I was genuinely thinking there was going to be a little bit of a sort of uh, a step off the, the stellar growth there. Obviously, we've seen a lot of ages dropping. We know dropping optimizer packages. So, you know, few people even saying they're coming off entirely. And so I did think there was going to be a bit of a, you know, a tail of a, a bit of a pause. And yet the figures themselves, there, there were, was it a thousand agents? 
thousand ages have actually come off. Yeah, I think they've had they've or had dis- I or think disappeared. It, by it, the way. it may be even even more than that. I can get you and the yet the margins well. have again straight through the roof, and everyone's out there unsurprised. Obviously, talking about still 73, 75 profit margins. Wow. I think the uh, right move are putting this down to agent struggling agencies closing yeah. uh, their doors and going elsewhere. But I think actually, if you were to speak to agents. Uh, and listen to what is being written in the forum uh, and the many, many forums mm-hmm. online. If you are to read what's being said in the comments on, on all of the, the news sites, um, you'll actually find that agents have already started that process a couple of years ago. I know we did, cutting down all of the right move products yep. to go down to basic. And then you've got some absolute heroes and some brave souls that have decided that they're actually going to come off right move altogether. Yeah. And they're going to try and generate those inquiries. And that does take a lot of balls. It does. Because so where, where I have a lot of time is not so much when they just go for A, another portal, but where they go, okay, well, I'm going to look at Facebook. We're seeing some returns there. And they start doubling down on that, which everyone would accept is a very different audience, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Rather than shopping the same ones that are yeah. bouncing between the boards. Well, it's seen as being more targeted, but I think that right move's big hook always was mm-hmm. that well, we are synonymous with with home moving, and that's what the, it's still what Peter Brooks Johnson is is saying. He's saying right move is synonymous with home yep. moving. Two thousand nineteen being the ninth year in a row, more people searched on Google for right move than yep. for the property itself, uh-huh. um, and it's about changing that culture. And unfortunately, there that. are people out yeah. there that are trying. So yeah. you've seen what. Robert and by the way, mm. putting all our faith in Facebook. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that charity. Yeah, Zuckerberg's <laughs> there for you people. <laughs> um, half the, half Half the hospitals in the in the country but, will have to close down if we can't get his taxes. I, I have to say, people like Robert May, yep. and uh, we we follow an account online yep. called Lawview who are looking at a blockchain use yep. of of, uh, of portals. But um, they're doing some fantastic work. Their, their smart searches are a heck of a lot smarter than Right Moves. Um, however, it's about educating the public, not the yep. agents. Yep. You are talking. You're preaching to the converted when you talk to agents about right move yep. and the evils of of letting a monopoly spring up. But the issue then becomes about getting it that message across to the to the members of the public. So on the market have tried to do that. Yep. Zoopla tried to do it. And what they all get really excited about is we've got a new TV advert out next week. <laughs> yeah. Now, when was the last time you sat through TV adverts? Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. So we we tend to sort of target watch these days, don't we? So I'm going to go and yeah, binge yeah. watch a season of Say Yes to the Dress. That's your favorite show. I know that. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> big fan. Um, but you you will not sit through the adverts if you can skip them. And these yeah. days you can skip them. So uh, I think the message to all of these people is: if you want to get to the public, you need to go where they are. Spending their time hanging out, mm. yeah. yeah which so, is- so with these portals, why are agents hesitant to move? Is it because they're um, generating leads or tenant or yeah, buyer yeah. leads, or both landlords high value leads, or both? Less less lettings, isn't it? To be fair, for, although I know Right Move are putting a lot of work into that, but ostensibly they're getting still loads of leads from mm. it. And you know, the, the irony is, of course, is that a lot of agents don't do the best work with those leads that they do get. Well, this is my next question. There's a lot of People who say they need it, otherwise they can't operate. But they st- amass this huge database of people. Now, rather than be tra- transactional management, they could be relational management. So really keep it in touch with people, personalize yeah. your service, own your patch. But- rather than going to for fresh stuff, you've got this beautiful, beautiful nurture thing. If you nurture it right, you think you can. You don't really but, need uh, it. I think we we became lazy because Right Move <clears throat> basically made us bad agents. We'd stick a property yeah. up there. We'd think, okay. Right move have told us that's where the public is searching, yeah. and we will just wait for the fishes to come to us rather than us mm. go out. Order to them. takers, right? Order, yeah, yeah. I mean, and, it's, and it's, yeah. it killed traditional estate agency. You know those days with the when you sat there with the roller decks yeah, thinking, I'm going to call Mrs. Yeah. Goggins. You know all your buyers, yeah, you, know, you, you don't do that anymore. No. And so I think, but that, then you could deal with more than ten buyers at a time, so that's quite helpful. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. You know, whilst right move are still that buzzword for searching for property, they've still got the stranglehold on on the industry. So more work needs to be done in terms of educating the public, and that is where people like on the market have, I think, in my humble opinion, have, have let us down. So they um, under the bridge. They're, yeah, their their mantra of uh, of writing that wrong has has not been done. Um, so Simon. The best bit of news this week, yes, you cool. were seen awake, on your feet, and dressed. 
a.m. Get out friends, of town. At the Property Mart National Association <coughs> conference last last week. Uh, big uh, keynote big, speaker. Keynote. Oh, well, yeah. The Gary V of. Uh, <laughs> once I paid the fee, yes, they, 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 they checked there was no way out. That was. I'll tell you just one story. But then they allowed me to be this month. The main sponsor. They said you got two options. You can do half an hour of an you know an informative intellectual talk where you can give the audience a lot of takeaways. I said option B, or you can talk about kerfuffle for ten minutes. I said what are we going to do for the other nine minutes? <laughs> <laughs> so how did it go? It was great. It was great. Thank you to Michael Stoop for uh, saying that gave me another ten minutes in bed. That was nice when you turned up as well. That was really uh, really well thought. I mean, it was very good. It was a, a very warm thought feedback. It was interesting. They had a lot of people over from NAR, who's obviously the American arm of the business and they were talking about it needing something like that over there so talking to a lot of people a lot of people have started to really save a lot of money by just using some of the simple tools the white papers we've done Lawrence Rand I think we spoke about saving £35,000 from his his two offices Goldfinch a great agency up in the northeast yep. just by looking at their suppliers saving just under £9,000 a year for their single office and then the biggest one of all Paramount single office again up in Hampstead by say cutting back on five suppliers that they weren't particularly using saving just under £60,000 that again like we were talking about before they doubled down on those suppliers so this isn't about cutting back per se yep. it's just making sure you're truly using partners rather than suppliers <coughs> Thought that was really interesting there. Some people are starting to see see some of the benefits of that at the moment. That's fantastic. So uh, yeah, it was good. Uh, what what else was that? I managed to get a Theresa May joke in as well. Go uh, on. Well, I was just Run, uh, <laughs> ten uh, them there. Uh, Take you, us well, through. You know how you obviously need, you, you can either be informative or funny, and sometimes you can be both. Neither, yeah. You can be uh, neither. Well, I was talking about obviously. I know you know you have this vision that all your agents are great negotiators. You know, it's put that coffee down. That sort of mentality. And actually, I actually showed the slide. It was one of the gifts that showed Theresa May, the sort of negotiator that walks out of DFS after having paid full price for a sofa. And that <laughs> actually went down, although the Americans didn't know what the fuck I was talking about. But then that's not the first time. It's because they don't have the beauty of, of DFS <laughs> in America. What were these eternal sales? <laughs> Where's, why, why are they not getting picked up, by the way? Never mind, you know, sort of. I, <laughs> anyway. I think they might actually be having a closing down sales. So they actually are. Fine, yeah. Yeah. That was also in, about in, in the papers. <laughs> um, so as you know, the Kerfuffle podcast is not here to provide you with uh, legal advice, <laughs> ad hoc or otherwise. Um, and I actually dream about picking up the industry press and not having to read a story about oh, somebody being caught red-handed stealing money uh, and being let uh, go scot-free. Um, but this week, uh, in fact today, uh, agent duped home seller out of 5,000 quid escapes jail. Uh, seemingly five thousand pounds isn't enough to get you sent to jail I mean, these you're, days. You're genuinely onto a thing. I mean, I told you I thought it was a bullshit article and yeah. shouldn't really sit on the show. But no, you know, you I'm bringing me. it in every week <laughs> because because I guess what I'm trying to say is that as it's long a, as it's, it's white trend. collar, yeah, and really. It, it's seen as almost a victimless crime, yeah. although somebody does obviously. Who, who are the lose two old, uh, old fellas out of trading places that get uh, Randolph and Mortimer? Yes, that's it's that right. sort of white collar jail, isn't it? You can imagine. Oh well, it's not. You know, it's not a real crime, is it? You know, but they're just dipping into the client account. But I think if you look at last week's story and this week's story, the one commonality is that we we don't have the resources necessarily to police this properly. Yeah, and mm-hmm. we certainly don't have the will or the resources to jail people over it. So until that happens, there is no real deterrent because no, it's not so. it's not seen as being taken seriously enough by the authorities. Um, and, and in this case, I think that the um, the agent had advised the customer that the the best price that they could get was eighty k mm-hmm. for the house, mm-hmm. and in actual fact, eighty five thousand pounds was paid in total consideration. That's eighty on the contract and five thousand pounds of Slipped cash out. that just went mm-hmm. out of, out of the way. Um, and this must happen every day. Yeah. Um, and if those are the ones that are just coming to the fore, aren't they? With and that's it. That's it. But when you read about escaping jail, it really fills you with hope as an agent. Oh, well, Milton over in Australia, they, they obviously there's very tight rules, isn't there? About that. Massive, there. Massive. Do you still get those these stories though that where there's um, people? Having not been there for a while, I would say yes, but I think that, you know, we're it, gradually it, it, adopting you, aren't you? Kind of, kind of. I think over the intonation at the end of the year. Yeah, it is. Yes, thank God for that. But I think what's interesting, what you mentioned is you can have all these regulations in place, but if no one's actually policing it, who is not self regulated, but it's government regulated body overseeing the industry, then 
why all these rules are in place. They're just sort of that police, but no one's actually going to police them. This is yeah. like, best honest. practice, please. Yeah. yeah. But no one's actually policing. Well, it, so it, yeah, people were just uh, skipping. I mean, I'm not naming names. I saw some agents up in the Northwest and on their website, they're still charging tenant fees. Like, yeah. But no they one's are. actually policing. They are, no, so they are getting true. away with it. That's so we start to move towards the old uh, Dubai model <clears> where, I mean, I don't know for a fact, where they literally dip into the client account to buy themselves a Porsche or something like that. It is, it is proper Wild West there in wow. terms of stuff. And if you can't do that, then the trust will go out of it and everything's going to explode, isn't it? Purple bricks are again in the news. I know you hate it when I talk about purple mm. bricks, but I have to every week until they're gone. To get it out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> purple bricks in new claims, fresh claims, about 80 million pounds of yeah. fees made in one year from unsold homes. Yeah, that's so um, traditionally, purple bricks is model, for those of you that don't know, um, a lot of it's based on taking fees up front and therefore save all that money save it all save but they they you are basically paying somebody to list your house not sell your house and therefore after that the incentive's gone the cash is gone and uh 80 million pounds. And then if you believe it in the adverts, a cake in the face or something would happen, wouldn't it? And you'd look all stupid about going with a traditional agent. How, however, Simon, no one watches adverts anymore. Uh, well, that just proves I do. There you but go. then I've been on um, golf for two years. But, <laughs> <laughs> but in other news, and I think um, I sent this to you earlier today, Purple Bricks' Facebook page was taken down over the weekend yeah, totally people and remains to... down. Uh, and this follows a pattern of agents removing their online presence yeah. when they get bad as feedback. As soon as you start getting there, I mean, it's, it's a risky... Risky road that because it just it really makes people who have left left them put turns them into zealots and yeah. you, you're either going to be on social at some stage and these people are going to find you no matter what. So if if what your estate is. agent isn't on social media, yeah. they are not the right estate exactly. agent for you. If they have no ability to leave a review, they are there's a reason for that. Yeah. If you cannot find them on Facebook or on Google or on yeah. any of the n- numerous reputable. Uh, online review it's, platforms. It's, it's an enormous war. I mean, would, would you yeah. would you book a hotel without, you know, in Tenerife, that H10 place that I don't just know, it depends closed if down? It's one that you're obsessed with these book by the hour <laughs> dirty things. That, but uh, plastic sheets. Is I only need ten minutes. <laughs> plastic sheets. <is> <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that from um, the results. Well, so <laughs> actually, um, spotted on online this week. So indeed.co.uk have a uh, potential to leave a review about employers. No. Oh. Okay. Mm. So basically if you previously... Well, what's the big site though? There's, there's one that already allows you to review your... Glassdoor? Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Glassdoor, Glassdoor, yeah, Glassdoor. And, and Glassdoor. businesses despite well, yeah. a lot of bad businesses do because you're out there being able to say yeah. our clients are, and our staff are the main thing. Oh, so and then people that, just yeah. jumping on Well, that. well listen, <laughs> listen to this. So I, I, I must state that this is... a. Unverified as far as we're concerned. Yep. Um, X Purple Brick employee review. I had no checks or information taken, but immediately started work without training. I was given no support or help, even when I asked for it multiple times. A very stressful job. Had people calling all hours of the day to my personal mobile. Such a relief when I left. Oh, right. Wow. And thanks um, to Mark Smith for sending that in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, an, another, another former employee... Uh, from the northeast, um, who can't even uh, write in full sentences, just a number of bullet <laughs> points. Um, awful factory of valuers who never stay long. Extremely high turnover of staff. Chargebacks to self-employed LPEs are unjustified, unreasonable, and unethical. Underpaid, lied to, bullied, abused. Drug culture. Now that got my eye. I thought. Are you sure this isn't a job advert? I thought it was a job <laughs> advert. At that point. Drug culture and seventy-hour weeks. Well, if you're working seventy hours, you're going to need a decent hour. drug culture yeah. to rather keep up those, with that. Rather than those Europeans in Corbyn trying to make us have <laughs> three days off. Uh, lack of support, overwork, non-compliant with the HMRC. Directors are incompetent, and they have a, a, a great blame culture. Ambivalent on the HMRC, um, you want to be honest. So I, I actually think those are all great reasons to join an organisation like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but this is it. We've we've said this before. You live and die by your. You're still going to be very careful with the, with those glass door ones because mm-hmm. I mean that is where yeah, well, you know, anyone going out the door. It, it, it's has, it's has, a, basically it, the equivalent of disgruntled tenants it's, leaving it's reviews as well. So we must state that this show in no way endorses any of the reviews left we, on there. We just but find it makes it funny. you think, doesn't it? <laughs> 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 okay um other hot news um and one of simon's takeaways from from the uh 
NAEA conference. Uh, basically, uh, everybody's talking about ways to speed up the selling process in, in the country yeah. and for it not to be to become derailed. Um, and reservation agreement trials are, are coming out. So we've we've already touched on Gazelle, which Gazeal, I think is yeah. doing a good job. Um, so the news is that. The Minister of uh, of Housing and Communities Local Government suggested that trials will begin in the first quarter of this year, but this has now been delayed. Uh, Matt Pryor, Lead Officer on Buying Reforms at MHCLG, mm. another really nifty named uh, organisation, updated delegates on the issue at the annual conference of the National Association of Estate Agents. He told agents that his department was still awaiting consultants' reports on the feasibility of the trials. But basically... I think what this comes down to is getting people ready to sell, yeah. which mm. in Australia, I understand, is the way it works. Right? I think it's the right way. It's one of the biggest transactions anyone makes, and I'm probably repeating what everyone says every single yeah. time. Like It just gives no certainty to the process. I was completely kerfuffled mm. oh, or bamboozled wow. well done. when I got here and, and see people saying, sales progression, that's a role. Like, mm. I don't get it. Chains, yeah. people fighting at five, five up and it all falls over five down the line, and it doesn't make sense to me. That's not fair. It's not right particularly for salespeople and businesses, that you put putting so much legwork into that process for it to all fall over. You look about some of the best, the best agents on the East Coast yeah. in Australia. You've got a month campaign and you were <clears> talking about they will be competing about we've only been on the market for 14 days, 18 days. They come over and see some of our best, you know, and it's just factors of months that they just yeah. can't, they can't understand how it can be so Yeah, and, so then, they, and then they talk about, start to talk about fall through and they're like, fall through? Yeah. And this is, yeah, it's just a foreign language. It really is a foreign language. So, yeah. So um, back to the uh, industry press again. And I did promise you a story about a Ferrari, didn't I? Uh, did you? It's just about two minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> One of the first signs of coronavirus is a lack of memory. Uh, wife of ex-Yopa employee guilty of fraud thought his Ferrari was a company car. Now that's a hell of a job, isn't it? <laughs> but this guy was paid 60000 a year um, and worked for the national firm Camelot. So I think Camelot are behind the, the lottery, but they're also yeah, they're right, behind yeah. Yopa as well. He defraud, defrauded Yopa, Yopa out of £505,000 <laughs> and Camelot out of £960,000. And is now awaiting sentence. He'll probably get off. Yep. Um, 5,960 is relatively the same ballpark, right? Yeah, I think <laughs> so. It's kind of big money. Um, but again, his wife had no idea about this. Um, I never do, do they? And the vast amount. If you do it of- right. <laughs> 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 Hello, Simon's wife. <laughs> um, There'd be a bigger fraud going on there if I had a wife. <laughs> Oh. Right, I think we're getting to that part in the yes. show where we have to introduce our guests formally. Del- yeah, and deliver real value. Uh, completely. <laughs> yeah. This After is where that, the Estate Agents podcast falls down. You've just fluffed people in for the last 40 minutes. and This uh, is what I do. This is what I've been brought is. in. <laughs> yeah, you can be happier, can you just do in the news? <laughs> I, I see myself as the Trevor McDonald of the industry. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do very much. A Jewish Trevor, Trevor McDonald. Uh, you called me a Jewish Ricky Gervais. <laughs> the, the, other week, the other week I was a there's Jewish a, panda bear. There's a problem with this I am party. Now, I am now <laughs> the, the Jewish Trevor McDonald. I, I think that I is, say it it's thing. racist to both Jewish people and Trevor McDonald all at the same time. Okay, I apologise again. Simon. To Trevor McDonald. <laughs> <laughs> Simon Tell loves me. and hates everybody equally. This, is the, this is the dream intro that Milton <laughs> <laughs> got, up and riding and on okay, the way. All right, all right. Let's rewind that and go again. We are happy to introduce our guest this week, Mr. Milton Janish. That's right. That's, that's very... He is joining us all the way from just London, West London. <laughs> London. Yeah, yeah. Is I've been all? here for a while. Just <laughs> London. London. I thought it was Australia. <laughs> Why not? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Does that make it more exotic? From Australia? Brisbane. Yeah. Brisbane. Australia. Oh, Brisbane. 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 Yeah. There's an intonation. Bloody hate it. <laughs> and uh, you're from a company called. Um, a company is called Inspect Real Estate, and we have multiple products, but I think we're, we're going to speak about a few keyware. Okay. Cool. So M- Milton has got his, his box of tricks here, and uh, I'd like to see him get to... it out. Yeah, you don't say <laughs> this that. This is legitimate. Show. I don't get to say that. <laughs> Do, are we not, why didn't you get the, the, the soundboard? Duh, 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 duh. <laughs> so we've just done a Scooby Doo style thing. <laughs> and now what you can see in front of you is a magical glowing case. 
Now, this probably needs some explanation unless we're going to say goodbye at this stage. It's not the control board at Chernobyl Reactor 1, <laughs> no, is no, it? No, no. So right. these are the coronavirus cases. <laughs> and He's going to live. He's going to live. <laughs> there, there's Mr. Simon Whale. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's not for that. That's it. Well, right, got my, Milton, got my length right. take us through take this us through fantastic bit of kit. So let's deal with what the issue is first and foremost. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Rance. So uh, a bit of, in, I guess, an intro into keyware, as it, as it were. It's basically, it will so, solve the issue of key transactions coming in and out of your office with your staff, your contractors, landlords, vendors, wherever it is, we are in key management. Yep. Because the one thing that we speak to people about in office is they have key issues, whether it's thousands of keys, hundreds of keys, whatever. Yep. So what we're trying to facilitate with keyware is rather than having to pull reports, you can physically see that but depending on the color of the Remember key. Remember, we've got loads of listeners, so describe what we're looking at as well here. Absolutely. The most Absolutely. So you're looking at a board. So yeah. this is your actual live interactive key reconciliation board. Okay. And as you interact with the board, yeah. it will then automatically check in and check out keys and make sure they're in the right place. Yeah. And as soon as you put it on the right hook, it instantly checks it back in. Nice. So all that administration that goes around keys, that's what we're trying to solve. So the legend's pretty simple and it's a very simple product, but it solves a very difficult and uh, big issue. So you're looking at it, green is it's the keys and the sets of keys to yep. a property are in the right position. Now, if it goes to blue, then we can do that. It's a simple of who's got the keys. So it's who, the property you're taking, who's taking the keys, and who they're going to. Yep. And you create loans, so I know which keys to take. Okay. As soon as you take that key off. So you typed in something there on your laptop, just yep. saying that you were, that as you would do in the CRM system or what you're using there, that's telling you it's now going to be passed out to an individual in the business. Yep, correct. And so. that's changed it from green to blue. Yep. Instantly visualized. Even someone as thick as me can correct. picture out what's going on there. Thank you for... Is no problems at all. So, so, <laughs> <laughs> so when you didn't when, even breathe. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. See, even you. Hang on. So bang on. when you're at that honeymoon period of your marriage, when your wife still let you have keys to the house, yeah, you could is, hang them on here and never this lose looks them. Like, so. what it's like when I gave it to my mates. <laughs> <laughs> perfect, perfect. So okay. what I've done there is gone. This is the property. Yeah. Who's got the keys? When they do back, and the loan gets created. The blue visual is now that loan's created, and I've actually received a transaction of what say I've collected the key yeah. and it could be from the agent. So that is the receipt of the checkout. The full audit log basically. Yep, absolutely. There, yeah. So if that was to go overdue, then it communicates all the overdue. So yeah. by email and SMS as well. So that will go purple, which is the color code. Yep. Now when the keys come back in, what typically happens, people will sign them back in, they'll sit on someone's desk. Even yeah. with software that happens because they don't go on the hook where they're actually yeah. supposed to. So with Keyware, we're mandating that process because all you have to do to check it back in is say, where does it belong Keyware? Oh, and it tells okay. you where it goes. Now that's tradition. So you just click to the bottom there, yep. and essentially just a bit like uh, some some uh, yep. towel lockers and things like that, don't they? In that's gyms, it. I believe. Correct. Correct. Have you ever been to a gym? <laughs> I was totally <laughs> getting in there. Somebody <laughs> like asking me to talk about morality. <laughs> yeah. He went for the free towels, right? <laughs> in a minute, I'm going to ask you why do estate agents need keys? <laughs> 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 perfect, perfect. So what you're looking at there is the next color code, which is red, which is what we call missing or illegal loan. So that's not really a deterrent to keep yep. someone from taking the keys off. So it goes red. That's first deterrent. Second yep. deterrent, there's alarm, which we disable for the demonstration purposes, which goes beep, 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 beep. So it gets to get put back on the actual hook. Yep. Now, part of the tech that we have, an instant SMS can go out to the branch manager, director within three to five, seven seconds has been the tops that we've waited for a text to go through and say, mm -hmm. that key's leaving. Now the fourth deterrent, because everyone's got their own keyware app, as well as their desktop using, we can actually track to see who looked at these keys if they're gonna just take them out. So we can track them for those okay. four deterrents. Now that doesn't stop people from taking it, but it definitely encourages them to best do practice. Check, proper, best practice. Because exactly. everyone's gonna know who had it. Uh, there's no- small, Absolutely. Yeah, okay. well, you Absolutely. can name and shame. <clears throat> And what, so talk us what goes on in most most agency offices. Mm. At the moment. So at the moment you turn up at an agent and if they're doing things by the book, they yeah. will have what's known as a key book that will have a bunch of addresses and codes. Yeah. And uh, each key will have a code. So if you lose those keys, it yeah. cannot be traced back with without the book. Yeah. Um, yeah. However, uh, it's notoriously inefficient. So people will come in, yeah. you may sign sign it out, put it back on the wrong hook. That happens a lot. Yeah. So, you know, well, most of them, when I go back, to that, you know, when you go backstage at an agent's, there's something that resembles like a Raiders of the Lost Ark sort of all these keys hidden all it. over the place. If you Shiny out, stuff. Yeah, like, things shot That's at you. That's it. Know. But very often, as you know, a 69 can turn into a 96. Exactly. Right? Zero is a right. How many times zero. does that happen? So, um, 
The really cool thing about this is it doesn't matter if you don't know where the keys go, you can ask it where to go and it'll tell you. Or if you put it on the wrong hook, yep. Keyware will actually say it becomes over there. Oh, so right. key management becomes a bit of an issue. So it's a cheap game for kids as well. Absolutely. It's Charles play. <laughs> Charles play. <laughs> Same we were gonna have we were gonna have a little game of battle <laughs> shit. <laughs> okay. Perfect. So, Perfect. So, so, you there you go. so this is extreme cutting edge then, is it, in terms of what what your your knowledge of what you've seen in the UK so far, obviously? Um yeah, there's different key systems, um, peg systems, um, yeah. you know, pads that you run things across. And they're all good systems. And it's just what to I guess reiterate what you were saying was every key management process is completely fine. Mm. And the idea is if you're following it to a T, then it's perfect. You yeah. know, don't invest in tech because you've got a great process. However, if you're doing heaps of admin just to do reconciliation or you are losing keys and all those things that just equate to administration behind your process. So, so, so there's a the dirty little secret of, of estate agency and this is globally because I've spoken to Milton about yeah. it. Mm -hmm. You used to have a bucket, I think. Correct. We had and a bucket of keys. You had a bucket time. of keys when you were an agent. So everybody... So they have only added toilets. Every, <laughs> everybody's so got... Racist. Everybody's got somewhere a massive box of keys that they yeah. have no idea where it links <laughs> to. Seriously, I'm telling you. You, 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 we talked about melting it down and, and making cars. Is it like out the money it? in the client account? <laughs> if it's been in there for five years, you give a charity. Correct. If you've had it for five years, you could just go check. Correct. Correct. What am I going to find so today? Every now and again, somebody will say, "Have you seen the keys for such and such a property?" Yeah. And then that you would go to the magic box. So this will get rid of that fun. So this is going to get rid of that completely. Oh, shame, now, um, I, I'm not jumping the gun here. But the next stage of this is is pretty cool. You guys are beta testing it as we speak. Uh, yeah, it's the next version of us. You call it version 1.2 of Keyware. Don't worry about beta testing. As far as I'm concerned, that's been here for years. <laughs> <laughs> but the good part about it is... Jet packs. <laughs> absolutely. So we know that but with Keyware, we can track the keys as they come in and make yep. mandates that process. So the next part is where are your keys when they actually are out of the office? So with Keyware and we're going through the next stage, hopefully June is what the data we spoke about earlier. Yep. It could be a little bit later for the UK. The idea is when you check keys out, yep, exactly. You clip the GPS tracker in, yeah. you swipe it in, Ooh. and then through the app and how that looks, we're yeah. still going through how we want to look and feel about it. Yeah. But you just know where the keys are by going, find my keys. Mm. Because the GPS tracker will be a static battery yep. that when you want to find them because it's overdue and you can't get in touch with that particular contractor or whoever it may be or the repeat offender, You'll be able to exactly work out where the keys are. So um, the presidential the suite at the Hilton yeah. Hotel on Park Lane in London. Yeah. Yeah. Put it in your wife's be. pocket. Good, right. good looking Meg. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was very Wellstein. That wasn't it. That was, that was horrible, Mister Wellstein. <laughs> but yeah, your mind just drifts off. Anyway, so yes. Okay, cool. So that's so, the next and, and then we're looking at how many is that? that this that is a cut down version of it, Simon. So yeah. we're looking at I don't even what how many count is that, but the actual panel. Keyword panel is, has 120 positions or properties. Okay. On each set, you can fit like typically your management, your viewing yeah. set, and your tenant set with all good agents because you all are good agents. That there'll be no void, so the tenant will come in and out just as quick as they came in and out. Um, so you'll have two sets that sync with the panel. Then are you able come. to put any? I mean, we all know how inefficient it is, hmm. but are you able to do any studies about uh, sort of the? Uh, efficiency gains by using systems like this. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Well, we've got clients across the world now. There's clients in the UK using it, so um, you know we can get those people to say what we what they think what they think about keyware and. And does it work standalone? Is, is it is you looking at you're looking at integration with other CRMs? Or uh, you... We would absolutely do uh, integration with CRMs, yeah. but I think at the moment is a standalone product. You don't need I, you don't need it, do you? No, because sometimes people just have a book, and that is completely okay. standalone to software anyway. So. But what's interesting is that in in Australia, typically your lead time to actually let a property or to sell a property has to be a lot shorter, doesn't it? Absolutely. So you need those time efficiencies and that's yeah. why they've got these systems there. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, typically yeah. a week, is it? Yep, so that's how it works in Australia. So this is how we got into tech because we used to be agents two lifetimes ago and a let fee, get it, is one week's rent plus tax. Yep. So you get really efficient of utilizing leads, diary management, how many staff you have executing those viewings and key management is a big part of the viewing process mm. or in Australia we call inspections. Um, so having a really streamlined uh, process behind that, and it's really tech driven. That's why it's probably heavy tech in Australia because if you want to run a you know a profitable business, you've got to you've so got to spend have less like time tracking your keys and more time tracking your fees yeah. with oh, keyword. Oh, you can have that. But <laughs> well, what I like about it is it's that classic tech, isn't it? Where it looks so 
idiotically simple that it means that there's some good, great stuff going on behind it. Yeah. The reason I love this on the demo is it's a spectacle when this guy gets out of this case. So that, yeah. <laughs> Even if I don't go there, people go, what's in the case? Yeah. <laughs> now, depending on what case I bring. Me, but usually they're running. <laughs> but also, it's, as long as I bring the right case and I don't pull out something floppy. <laughs> also, it, it's one of the very few areas of, of what I'd call physical prop tech because the stuff that we deal with yeah. It's software, it's in a cloud. It's all ethereal, isn't it's, it? It's yeah. All up, yeah, yeah. And this is actual stuff that you can touch and feel and it actually day works. Day-to-day in terms of what every, what every agency needs it. And, and you know, you can do yeah. it. And talk us price points. Price point. So the panel itself is the investment. It's five seven five. Yeah. Uh, and the subs behind it are forty five pounds per office. Now the version of the panel that you see is a cut down version. Yep. Uh, it will hold one hundred and twenty keys. One hundred and twenty properties. One hundred and twenty properties. And for that say. particular yeah. property, up to three on the hook will hold. Okay. Typically, you have your tenants that come in and out, as I mentioned. Okay. So yeah, it can. You can even split it up between your sales and your lettings department if you've got exceptional. that. Exceptional. Yeah. And do we have a groundbreaking offer? For Kerfuffle members. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Thanks. So um, any Kerfuffle member can get this uh, normal 10% off, which is that really, really ad hoc number of 517, but we'd like to make it a nice even 500. Nice. Um, so we can make sure that's a bit more palatable in the old hip pocket. Good, good. That comes yeah. with three-year warranties, replace, Love. repair, all that good stuff that all tech should have. Uh, we'll be there to support you. And okay, the- so anyone either go back to Milton directly and just mention Kavuffle or write into podcast uh, at kavuffle.it just asking for a bit more information about about the keyware system and we'll obviously forward on those details. And well. we will post some links to your website and the videos yep. and the explainers yep. Yep. and yep. Uh, we'll get the word out. Yeah, there. you do need to see it, which is probably why we shouldn't have done a podcast. But you know, well, we'll talk about that later, David. That's a, that's a creative issue that we're going <laughs> to... <laughs> it's a vodcast, sweetheart. It's a vodcast. You, you, which you, is you why this is why I'm dressed in adult clothes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I've got George Dawes. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, thank you very much for that. Perfect, That's brilliant. Guys. Cheers, Wilson. Good stuff. Anyone who wants to, us to discuss anything in particular next week, let us know because we're out of ideas. We're going to have to do Ask Whaley next week. Ask Whaley, yes. For those fans up, there was quite a few people there. There were people wrote him. I gen- you genuinely can't have too many of those in a row because the seriousness of the show will fall off the side of a cliff. We have gravitas, my friend. We do. Okay. Cool. Thank you all. Cheers. See you you soon. Everyone's kerfuffling.